day release is our best day of the week. It's our opportunity where we can bring the boys in from um, 8.30 in the morning um, through to 6 p.m. And then what we do is we provide a complete bespoke programme. Every, every week can look differently, um, but they have access to the whole facility to enable us to try and work with them in different ways. We do a range of things from, from football to nutrition to sports science. We try and make it as, as varied as possible week to week. And obviously then at the end of the day, the four till six slot at the end of the day, we get teachers that are you know, currently working in schools to come in and, um, and do the boys' education. You get to work with them all day. You get to see them, you get to interact with them. So you can develop them as, as, young, as young adults and develop them on their journey to see what they can be. And, and hopefully you start to see that progress on a day release where you see them like really start to communicate and become a more mature and more a more positive person around the place. Do a quick, come on, line up, line up, let's go. Oh, Jacking. All right, so quick down, quick up, jump as high as you can. Ready? Jump. Good lad. Basically, we're just collecting some benchmarking data so that clubs can benchmark their players and look at how they compare to the national average of that category. A lot of the players do enjoy it. I'd say a lot of the younger boys, so maybe these under 12s, kind of just want to beat each other. Uh, it's quite fun to see what scores people get. As you start to step up to maybe the under 18s, under 21s, they're scholars then, um, and you often find that they're like, really pushing for like, high performance. Obviously, they want to make the elite level, um, which I'm sure these boys do as well, but um, it's more of an elite standard, where obviously the boys are still here for elite training, but it's also to have fun. You two stay from here, that way, let's go with me. Let's go with me. What about the boot? Let's go with me. Yeah, don't worry, best one. We're doing one bounce. Yeah, some of that maybe, while we're waiting. In the early days, it was about, they made sure that you just had as much fun as possible while you're playing football. Uh, had a smile on your face the whole time, which I feel like is one of the most important things in football. Yeah. As I grew older, it was just a range of different styles and different opinions that have helped me grow into the person I am today, and I'm thankful for that. Keep up, keep up. The boys enjoy coming to day release. They love, uh, obviously, their excitement around coming that. They know it's a really hard day and it is a really gruelling day for them where they're here, you know, 8.30 till 6 o'clock. But the smiles on the faces, the variety that they offer, that we offer to them and how they, they can be moving from one place to another place, I think it's really uh, unique in that sense. For the boys, you know, that they are on from, from minute one. It is full on, it is moving from one thing to the next. It's not treated like a summer camp and a day off school. It is, it is really, really hard, intense day of work. Trainers on again, cut them on. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. I just encourage, obviously, as to go in past, because a lot of them will slow down before the end. So you just want them to run through the white cones. But I really enjoy it. It's good to see a lot of different individuals, you know, just see their development. These coaches, like the sports scientists, they'll probably get more from it in terms of these individual sessions because they work with them day in, day out. But it's good to add to, you know, like a national benchmark average where you're helping players develop. They do this regularly and it helps us see, not just for them, but for other players in the future, kind of what, how that changed over time. And again, it helps us just identify where the air maturation is for that. You put a kid in a race and they love it, don't they? So like they all want to know who's doing the fastest and all that. So the Premier League come, they do it. It's like it's all fair. I haven't cheated, you know. So so it's good. They have a good laugh with it. To be fair. Ready? Whatever you want. The job for us is to develop them as, as children and, and as players first. So it's about putting the people uh, and, and then as what we've got young adults in front of us. Um, and then the football is that vehicle for us to use those things. So can we divide our work between footballers and, and, and them as, as people? And they work hand in hand in those things, really. Every age of, of young player takes a different type of communication. You know, they go through different stages of development and each individual within that group, you might have a group of 18, 20 boys, each one of them needs different support, different communication. Some need an arm around the shoulder, some need a little bit more. Younger Academy is about working with individuals and developing the individual. We talk a little bit around you as a person and before the player. So, you know, being a good person, character, your personality, um, intrinsic motivated, so somebody who is willing to, to, to love the game and work hard to, to, to try and achieve um, their, their football and ability. It's important to try and prepare them for what's to come. I think each kind of 
level they go up, the demand, if you like, becomes a little bit greater. The work that you do with them changes slightly. Ultimately, we want the boys to come in here and enjoy it. Yes, it's serious, but ultimately, it has to be fun. They have to keep that love of football. Right. Plan for this morning, football-wise. Support play this week with me down in that orange square there. We'll have Rubes, Jude, Hugo, Lewis, four, Ollie, five. Let's go. I'm always big on, on attitude. I think attitude for the, the boys, particularly the younger age, has got to be spot on. They've got to come in with the desire to work hard. That's got to be first and foremost in everything they do because you can have as much talent in the world, but if they haven't got the attitude to work hard and, and push themselves and listen to the coaches, listen to the support staff, then yes, it's going to be really difficult for them, I think. You've got to give it 100%. You can't be disrespectful to your teammates, to the staff members. Time-wise, you have to be perfect. And it's things like that that ingrain you, that you remember through your whole time. It's why I want to be the best professional I can be, because I've had them lessons taught throughout my whole age groups. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's move. Let's move it. Let's move it. What options do we need? We've got pressure. We've not got pressure. Are we high? Are we low? So we are a high challenge, high support environment where we'll make things demanding for them and, and challenge these players in, in everything we do. Quinny, Quinny, you're way too far off the pitch. I'll give that to them. Yes, they're a young footballer, but they are ultimately a young person. What we forget is some of these boys will, will cuddle up with a teddy bear at night. You know, they're not a professional footballer. They're aiming to be a professional footballer, but they're a young boy, ultimately. It's important we don't create this narrative of of their mini professionals because they're not. The older they get, the, the closer we take them to scholarship and beyond, then obviously we start to ramp things up. But it's about keeping them young and really understanding where they're at within their development as a person. They're good, Oakley. Now we're trying to use them to build. So we've just played a great through ball there. How have we created space for it? There we go. Two player move, fix and slide. Fantastic. When I first found out I was doing the day release, it was like <laughs> the best thing in the world as a young kid. Uh, great memories, just training like in days like this, and then maybe do a, your, your lessons after football's finished. So it got you ready for a scholarship, so it was great. What day release gives you is you can't do football for the whole day. That's just not going to be worthwhile our time or their time. They have psychology sessions, they have gym sessions with our sports scientists, they have obviously the football sessions. We do want to provide those other opportunities to develop them as, as, an, you know, as individuals and there's m much more of a variety of different stuff available during the day. Obviously they get extra delivery here, extra technical stuff. They've just been at a nutrition workshop the psychologist will do workshops with them or she'll have like little one-to-ones with some boys and the, and the boys love it. They have open access to me if they need it. I'll just pop in, see them train and make sure that the culture's right. It's challenging, but it's fun. You know, make sure that they understand that in our environment that they have people that they can go to. Some of our players, our outfield players, will go and observe under-18 sessions. They'll go and get in around that. They might bump into some first-team players and the, and, the, and the manager at the time. So it's, it's great for that interaction between academy to uh, our professional phase. I still remember clearly me being that boy, seeing the likes of Andy King and thinking, oh my God, wow. So the fact that you might see a couple of young lads and they get excited, it's just, it's a great feeling. and. I'll be the sort of player that if anybody needs any help, any advice, I'll be there because um, I've been in that position. So, as I said, I can sympathise and empathise if you're going up, if you're feeling down. So, yeah, um, I'll continue to be that role model because you need players like that in the game to help the next generation. How much are you going to listen and take on board from what your coach has said? And this is about who do we listen to? But that must be really difficult where your coach has said, you know what, you've done really, really well today. Well done. And then you're walking away thinking, I don't think I played well today. I don't think I did well. So who do you listen to? We have a, a large multidisciplinary team um, that we provide. So we have obviously the coaching department. So there's, there's, there's full-time coaches working here to plan and deliver the best possible football practices. We have, you know, excellent sports science, um, psychologists, player care team, and then it's making sure that we have an education um, to support them through that programme as well. So are they learning, you know, are they school, school homework and things like that are all going in the right direction. So in today's session, we've got a theme from the coaches and that theme is support runs. And what we're gonna do is analyse best practice clips. And from there, we'll give the athletes a task to do on the computers and the tactics board. So boys, today, as you may have guessed already, we're going to be looking at supporting runs. What can we notice about 
the back line? How are they communicating? Yeah, I think they do enjoy it. They enjoy doing their own tasks because they feel like they're navigating their own learning as opposed to us delivering straight to them. We're, we're finding little bits of play and picking them out and talking about them and explaining them to each other. When we do it here and we present back, obviously it builds our confidence up. Every week can look differently, but we always make sure at the end of the, of the, of the day there is education and it's, it's, you know, they are there at that time to make sure that they've brought their homework and the coaches observe some of the, the work that goes on with the education team and they're here to, to work hard. What we do is we have a really rigorous programme with making sure that there's really open lines of communication between the schools. From a really young age, they have to take responsibility for their learning and they know that every single Monday they need to go and see their teachers or they need to email them and they need to ask them for for the work that they'll be missing on the Tuesday's lesson. Um, they've also got really good at adapting to what they're doing. So it could be that they know that they need to have their own textbooks. It could be having work online. And it means that they're really comfortable in kind of accessing a range of resources that are online as well. Right, okay, so what do we have to get on this PowerPoint? A lot of the boys that come in are very well drilled, great attitude, they've got the work ready and they crack on and, and the level of work is really good. If there is an instance when boys are falling off or the school's not happy with the work that's being produced or the grades are dropping, then that's a conversation and that boy might end up going back into school for a period of time until they get where they need to get to, but that is very, very rare. So there's a lot of buy-in, I think, both from us as an academy in being invested in their educational futures, but also, I think, in seeing the balance between education and football and how their work ethic with one also relates into the other. I think everybody is aware, from staff to players to parents, that the percentage of players that go in to make um, it, as a professional footballer in the Premier League is, is very, very low. What we're trying to do is, is use football to provide you know, an, everyone an opportunity to, to continue their footballing journey wherever that will be. Not all boys will make it to be footballers. They're very good at football and that's great. It's an elite setup, um, but the majority of them won't become footballers. So we want to look at other ways that we can um, upskill them, give them good experiences. So we're looking at the young person holistically. I always had it in my head that I wanted to be a footballer and I was going to do everything possible to make sure that happened. But then again, I know how it is and was, so I made sure that I was, like, my schoolwork was a great level. Um, I worked hard, I didn't just completely put all my eggs in one basket with football. I made sure I had good grades in case I needed them. Luckily it paid off, but I feel like if it didn't, I would have had a good core to go back to um, if I wanted to do another venture. We are a, a club that has a real high retention rate of players and we do try and provide these, these players with the most amount of time that we can give them to, to develop and, and to try and show their best. And when we have to make that real difficult decision to say that we won't be continuing their registration, that's when we then, become, we then action our, our, our exit strategy where it's around, okay, so what's next for this player? How do we provide them with opportunities? So we try and give them other alternatives at other trials and at other clubs and, and try and you know, action those things. We have got so many success stories of players that have, have left the club but have moved into another club and been able to have either a career or at times they've been able to move into um, a different part of, the, of, of, of football. And that's only because of the work that we've done while they've been with us to get them ready for other areas of, the, of, of sport and other areas of football. It's great to see those players come back some come back and become analysts, some come back and become coaches, some go off to university, some go off to America to do a scholarship over there. It's, it's the, the wider skills that they learn to go on and, you know, even if it's not a career in football, the stuff and the experience they get here can, can take them on to, to have a good career in whatever they choose to do. You miss and get in the game. I'd like to think we provide hopefully a bit of inspiration for what they can do. I mean, if you walked into our main building there, our current under 18s and assistant under 18s coach are both ex-players from this academy. And just to know that that's a pathway for the boys and to be honest, for them boys to know it too, to see those people uh, in the building and, you know, and, they, and they know those stories. I think for me, it's great, but I think for the boys, it's even better. I was here myself between 12 and 16. My parents went, all around the country with me. The miles and the money that the parents spend in terms of getting their children to, to different places is, is huge. You know, it's a massive demand and I think we have to take that into consideration as well and we try and support 
parents and families as much as we can. If I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for my, for my parents and my mum because it's a sacrifice as much for them as it is for the players, the, the fact that they're coming in every week, multiple days, just to give their child an opportunity to, to play football is a credit to them. For parents, it's a, a huge commitment that becomes a real priority for, for them. But I think that they commit to that programme and they see the value of the, of the, not just because of what could happen at the end of it, but what they see their son developing into. And any parent that's able to see the, you know, inside Leicester City and see what we provide will find any way they possibly can to, to you know, to commit that time to, to attend. Everyone who, who plays and, and, and works here love, loves football and for our players who are, you know, whether they're from the young ages all the way through, that the job is for them to have that fire and that spirit to love football and continue in, in, in that as a, as a career, whatever that might be. For me personally, I think coaching is all about relationships and the more you know about the boys, the better it is. You see them not just when they're on the pitch. We see each other in the canteen or, or whatever else and we have a laugh and we're all having a joke and a play. But we also now understand each other better as individuals. I think I've been here, what, 11 years now, so it, it, seeing players come through. There's boys in and around the 21s, going out on loan, getting in and around the first team now, seeing them get professional careers um, and playing in the Premier League, making debuts. That's as a coach, it's, it's what it's all about. That's what we're here to do, to try and give that young person the dream of potentially playing Premier League or international football. That's the rewarding part of the job. I remember 10, 11 years old, like watching the first team, thinking, imagine playing there one day. And the fact that you, I am now is a bit surreal. Like not many people go through the whole academy and age groups and make it into their boyhood club first team. It does fill me with a lot of pride, not just myself, but my family, with all the sacrifices that I can so I'll almost repay that and, and live my dream now because that's all I've wanted to ever do.